Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about lesson one, um, one nine from the seventh grade book about order of operations in the distributive property. Um, first, let's talk about the distributive property. Okay, you probably you probably intuitively know what this is, but you might not know what it's what it's called. Okay, so say I've got a problem like six times four plus six times five. Okay. So it's kind of broken into two parts. Six times four, well that's 24. Six times five, okay, that's 30. Okay, that's essentially the same thing as saying six times nine. Okay, basically, you know, the six is the same on both, right? Okay, and all I have to do is then just add those two. Okay, six times four, 24, plus six times five, that's 30, that's 54, well, six times nine is also 54, okay? So you may see examples like, um, let me just copy one from the book. Um, use mental math to find the missing numbers, then simplify. Okay, so they'll have like something 4.8 is equal to 6 okay so in a case like this we're trying to figure out well what numbers first should go into the blanks okay well well, looking over here, what number does it have in common? Right? It's got the 6, okay? So that's essentially, that means this is also going to be a 6. Okay, so 6 times 4.8 is the same thing as, okay, so now we're kind of ignoring the 6s now. Everything's kind of the same with the 6s, okay? So let's ignore them. So basically 4.8 is equal to 5 take away what? Point two, right? All right. So the purpose of the distributive property is just, it, it's kind of a way to um, work out uh, kind of larger multiplication problems in your head. So just in my head, you know, they're just, they're having you do these sort of activities here to just kind of get you to understand how these numbers work and um, together. But if I was in my head doing this, I'd be like, okay, 4.8, that's about 5. I know I can do 6 times 5 in my head pretty easily. That's 30. Okay? But it's not 5. It's 4.8. So I can't, my answer is not really 30, is it? Um, 5 is 0.2 greater than 4.8. So i got to go ahead and multiply 6 times 0.2 and then subtract that. Okay? That's what the distributive property is. It's just getting you to work with those numbers in your head, um, and it's just a way of breaking them down so they're a little easier to work with. All right, so that's the distributor property. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about order of operations, okay? Order of operations, I sure hope you remember this phrase by now, um, Pim does, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, so up to this point, you probably had all of these in sixth grade math where you had to work with parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, so parentheses, so remember parentheses, exponent, so that's like to the whatever power, multiplication, divide, you know what that means, then addition and subtraction. All right, so these are the different processes or different ways that problems can be organized, okay? It's just a way of getting you to do the first things you're supposed to do first and then kind of go from there. So let's just work out a few examples from the book. Um, six plus one times five. Okay, so again, we start over here, okay? If, are there any parentheses? Because if so, we would do them first. No parentheses, okay, let's move on. Are there any exponents? Nope, no exponents in this one. All right, and then multiplication and division, they are really the same. The multiplication does not 
necessarily have to come before division. They're actually the same, just like addition and subtraction are the same. And in the case of a problem where you have both multiplication and division, you just work from left to right. You don't have to do the multiplication first. Okay, but in this problem, we do have multiplication. That's this problem right here, 1 times 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that's, I'll rewrite the problem. 6, okay, 1 times 5, and that's 5. Okay, so I rewritten the problem, already doing this step. Okay, and then now we're ready for our last process, is process which is addition. Okay, and my answer is 11. All right, that's pretty basic. I think we need to get a little bit more difficult and get all of these processes going. Um, 48 divided by 5. All right, here's our problem. Okay, 48 divided by, in parentheses, negative 4 times 3. It's not a decimal. It's times 3 plus 2. <coughs> All right, so let's start with my first step, parentheses. Do I have anything in parentheses? Yeah, I do. Okay, I've got the negative 4 times 3, so let's rewrite this. And then we'll go ahead <coughs> and do this step. Okay, so just do with some parentheses. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Okay, so I've done that step. Okay, let's keep going. Are there any exponents? No. Okay, multiplication or division? Uh, yeah, I've got division right here. Okay, so that's this right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide 48 divided by negative 12. Okay, that's negative 4. All right, and then we still have the plus 2. All right, and now we're ready for our last step, which is the addition. Okay, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Is my answer to this equation using the correct order of operations. <coughs> no, the tickle of my throat. All right, let's do one more. Okay, let's do. So we've got 3 squared times 8 times 3 plus 2 minus 6. <coughs> oh my goodness. All right. So let's go ahead, start with order of operations. What do I do first? Parentheses. <coughs> so I'm going to rewrite this <coughs> with this part being done. Okay, so I do what's in parentheses. In this case, it's 3 plus 2 is 5 <coughs> minus 6. Okay, so I've rewritten that. Now let's go to the next step, which is exponents. Do I have any exponents? Yes, I do. I have 3 squared, so let's go ahead and simplify that. 3 squared is 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, times 8 times 5 minus 6. All right, then the next I have multiplication or division. Do I have either of those going on? Yeah, I've actually got to multiply in a couple of spots, don't I? Okay, so here I've got 9 times 8. Here I've got 8 times 5. Which one do I do first? Okay, I multiply. I do left to right. So in this case, I'm going to do 9 times 8. Okay, <clears throat> so that's 72 times 5 minus 6. Okay, now I still have some more multiplying to do. 72 times 5, you know what, I'm going to use the distributive property to help me with this. 72 times 5, that's the same thing as 5 times 70, 350 times 5 times 2, 360. Okay, so that's 360 minus 6. Okay, and now I'm ready for my last step, which is a subtraction. So my answer to this problem is 350. All right, so that is using order of operations, okay? So just, it's very methodical, just kind of make sure you're doing what you should do in the correct order, okay? And you see how I kind of write out, I do one process or one step, 
rewrite it, do another step, rewrite it. And I know that seems like it's a lot extra, but it really does kind of help uh, just keep you on track. All right, so good luck with this section.